Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video answering some questions, showing you guys some training footage. But before we hop into the video, I wanted to let you guys know that right now, the same fat loss protocol that I am adhering to that's helped me go from this pink to this pink is now available for pre order from Kaizen, me, Bart, Omar Isof have come together over the years, if you guys aren't aware, and tried to make templates, programs for you guys to follow, whether your goal is fat loss muscle gain or strength gain to help you towards your goals and right now advanced fat loss is at a discounted price for pre-order so it is available right now limited time a little bit cheaper for you guys if your goal is fat loss getting shredded like myself i got about five more pounds to go four more weeks or so check it out let's get to the video let's get to your questions follow me solid mike 2ks on instagram if you want to get involved with these questions Question is, what inspired you to be in Just Kidding News? For those that don't know, some of my good friends, Barquan, Gio, Antoinette Kwan, uh, are two of my best friends, and they own a company called Just Kidding Films, where they have a bunch of different productions, different YouTube channels, they do skits, and they have a show called Just Kidding News that I have been featured on. Nothing quite inspired me, but it's a really good time. It's almost like a podcast setting, uh, chatting about hot topics or current events, and that's one of my favorite things to do with my friends. So anytime I'm in Los Angeles and Just Kidding News invites me to come on, Bart and Joe and all the homies, uh, Tiff, I have a great time, and so, that inspired me to have a good time with my friends and try to make content for you guys. What's my favorite protein shake or pre-workout? So for those that haven't been following me for a while, I don't really take many supplements. Um, I'll eat a protein bar here and there if I'm wanting a snack or if I'm on the road and some, need something convenient, but I don't really do shakes or powders. Uh, I don't really do pre-workout powders either. I don't think one, most of them are dosed correctly. Two, they don't have anything I necessarily need. And three, the powder itself upsets my little tum tum. So typically, uh, if I am going to do something pre-workout, it's gonna be black coffee or some type of energy drink and just get a little bit of caffeine uh, before I go and train. Otherwise, uh, I strict to uh, pretty much just whole foods. That's what I'm into. I eat food, steak, chicken, fish, sushi, things of that nature. Where does Silencio Mike see himself in 10 years? Truth is, I don't really know. You know, I think uh, I always try to plan ahead a little bit. I always try to have to uh, kind of have a safety or reserve net. Um, financially to, to keep myself uh, safe and alive and, and those I care for, my mom and everybody that I try to take care for or take care of. But to be honest, I don't have, you know, a big grand scheme goal. Um, something that I've always done is just kind of, you know, head down, chin ups, one of the phrases I use a lot. And uh, it just basically means head down, focused in on what I'm doing, trying to do whatever it is I have going on better. Uh, and then the chin up part is just kind of having pride in what I do, sticking to my morals, sticking to who I am uh, and doing the best I can. So that's kind of the mentality I take on everything, lifting, business, life, content is I'm so dug in right now. And I know if I'm doing my best and always constantly creating and evolving in this minute or maybe tomorrow or the day after that five, 10 years from now, wherever I'm supposed to be or whatever all this is leading to, um, it'll come. Uh, I don't know if that's destiny or you know whatever it might be, whatever word you want to throw at it. I just know if I work my hardest and do my best right now, stick to my guns, be myself, that 5, 10, 15 years from now, uh, everything will kind of resolve itself. And, and, and in between there, there, there may be failures. There's been many uh, to get me where I am right now. But uh, every choice you make, you can easily undo that choice or make a different choice to read, uh, head a different road. So um, I'm not too worried about the future. Uh, I think about the future maybe a little too much, but I don't have a plan per se. Um, just focusing on now, trying to do better, trying to make better content, constantly evolving on the platforms and as a content creator. Is a six day split push, pull, legs with powerlifting and bodybuilding combined too much for a natural lifter? Um, being natural or not is not gonna be the biggest issue. It's gonna be managing that volume and the intensity within that frequency and then also managing your sleep and nutrition. So being in a calorie surplus so you can recover and then get enough sleep and then managing the volume. You can't do 10 sets of 10 every single day, max effort type stuff. But uh, if you manage the volume, push, pull legs six times a week, you could probably train um, and get good results from. Yep, 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 yep. When did I start powerlifting and how quickly did I progress? So I started lifting weights when I was in about eighth grade, seventh grade or so for basketball purposes. Uh, and did some, you know, a lot of like movement drills and some basic bodybuilding and body awareness stuff uh, to build a little bit of muscle and kind of rehab uh, or prehab stuff to not get injured in my sport plus conditioning. Um, 
I didn't really start powerlifting, powerlifting until I was more in my 20s. Uh, and I progressed pretty quick. You know, in the first couple of years, I probably went, you know, 275 bench to 325. Uh, I probably went from like a 315 deadlift to maybe a 500 pound deadlift. And probably took my squat from, you know, 275 to around 495 or so within the first couple of years of training. Um, and then from there, it's been a real, a real battle. Uh, you know, multiple things play a factor. My lifestyle, my businesses, my travel, uh, inconsistencies in training, and then my inconsistencies, which I talk about a lot. My biggest faults as a lifter has been chasing too many goals at once, wanting to kind of be lean, but not to get too big, but not get too small, uh, to not focus on strength and all that. So uh, number one goal, you know, advice would be to stick to one goal. If your goal is to get strong, be in a slight calorie surplus for a very long time, and I mean years, um, to really allow yourself to progress the best. Really focus in on technique and find yourself a good coach, a good mentor early on so you can focus in on proper training methods, uh, programming, periodization, and technique. Uh, to get where you want to go. Do you use the light banded or non-banded squat as a pre-squat exercise to cue hip hinge? Um, no, no. The, 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 the box squat, um, I think that's what he's talking about. The box squat is not a hip hinge. The back squat is just kind of a hip dominant squat. Uh, the hip hinge is actually quite different from that. And so if I was just to teach that, it'd probably be more like a, you know, I'd actually have people deadlift probably, but if not, if you wanted something to lead up into it, it'd probably be some kind of uh, kettlebell swing or a kettlebell uh, kind of deadlift with a high hip uh, to learn the hip hinge, something of that nature, kind of a stiff leg RDL type deal. What's nine plus 10? Don't know if this is a trick question, but I'm gonna go with 19. I'm gonna go with 19. Is it me or the voice I was making in podcast episode 20, you sound like Adam Sandler? Now, I've never really got that I've sounded like Adam Sandler. Uh, I've gotten that I've looked like Adam Sandler, and boy, do I think he's a handsome man. Uh, I love me some early Adam Sandler. You're going back to Billy Madison. You're going back to Waterboy. Even some of his newer stuff makes me giggle. Um, but no, I never got that I sounded like Adam Sandler, and if you guys are lost on what we're referencing to, it's my new podcast with Omar Isaf. Plug, plug, plug. Mama's Boys Podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Check it out. New episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, it's a lot of fun chatting about life, chatting about friends, uh, hot topics, our childhood. Check it out. What country do you like your coffee from? Rwanda, Guatemala, Ethiopian. My favorite coffee is probably Wakandan. Uh, actually, I have no idea where I like my coffee from per se, um, but I do like a lighter blend or a medium blend coffee. I sip on a pour over. That's what I make myself every morning before I hop into the laptop, hop into emails. Um, pour over, light roast. Captain and Kilo, shout out to the homies. They send me a lot of coffee and their stuff's pretty delicious. Um, shout out to Caveman Coffee. They've sent me a lot of coffee over the years and that stuff's really delicious too. Would you ever have your mom as a guest on your podcast? And I would, I would love to chat with my moms. Uh, who knows when we'll do that or if we'll do that, but yeah, we can talk, we can talk to my moms. How can you most effectively improve your squat? So, uh, to improve any lift, you know, balancing your programming, having, uh, in my opinion, submaximal training where you have, you're working in 60, uh, 70, maybe even 80% range where you're getting enough volume in that is practice sets times reps, uh, but also a load that you can manage where you can, your form is not breaking down over and over and then a decent amount of frequency. You know, for most people that's somewhere between two, two to four squat days in a week. Uh, and then constantly cueing yourself, videotaping yourself, having friends or coaches look at you and improve your form every single session. Try to work on a different cue or a different uh, motor pattern to get better. So you get that technique in and you're building volume at the same time. And that's, my opinion, the best way to train your squat. What's your favorite brand or type of squat rack and why would you recommend for a home gym and why? Um, you know, what, what, what goes into a home gym kind of depends on your goals, your style of training. Um, you know, the basics for me would probably be some type of squat rack. Uh, I'd like a chin up bar with multiple handles. Um, I, I don't like a fully supinated on a straight bar, it kind of hurts my shoulders. So some kind of neutral grip would be cool, plus a pull up bar, obviously a barbell, some weights, some type of flooring so I could deadlift. Um, I've used a lot of good racks in the days. Uh, Sorenex makes a, a mighty good rack, uh, very you know commercial gym uh, um, quality, very, very sturdy, probably last, last you a lifetime. I've seen some of Rogue stuff and used it, it's also very good. I think their, their lighter line isn't quite as quality as Sorenex's basic line, but uh, it's made for you know e economy line or whatever, it's a little bit cheaper maybe, um, but that's also really solid. Um, some kind of hamstring deal maybe. Uh, I'd like a chest supported row. That's one of my favorite movements, you know, whether it's a hammer strength or something like that, where your chest's on a pad and you can row. Um, dumbbells, uh, a nice set of dumbbells from maybe 25s up to, you know, I'd 
potentially hundreds or more. So I could do some incline, an incline bench, and then a really solid uh, bench press uh, or, or adjustable bench that I could actually bench out of. That's probably all I need per se. An assault bike, something to warm up or do some kind of conditioning with. That'd probably be, that'd probably be it for me, which hopefully I'm moving out of this place in the next couple weeks or months here. Uh, I've told many of you, but that's the goal to get my Twitch going. Um, trying to get a little bit faster internet where I live right now. The internet speeds just aren't good enough to stream uh, how I'd like. So I'll probably get better internet in my new spot and then hopefully a garage. Right now I don't have a garage. So hopefully a garage and maybe a home gym so I can film more content here and pot potentially stream games and lifting on Twitch. Uh, we shall see. More vlogs coming. I'm debating debating the fact to do some daily vlogs. Uh, once I get in a new spot, I'll be a little bit closer um, to where things are happening. Right now I'm kind of in the suburbs. There's just not much to do out here. That's why I just basically work and work out, film content for you guys. Um, just work on my laptop. But uh, the new area I'm looking to live, live in uh, should have a garage so I can do the gym stuff. And then I also just closer to downtown where I can walk around and, and do some cool stuff. So just throwing it out there. Daily videos coming, maybe, maybe a little bit more lifestyle, but still, you know, at least three, four days a week, pure vi lifting videos or lifting involved. Uh, I'd be able to show you guys my nutrition, my daily stuff, and maybe some adventures that I go on. Uh, I love Northern California, so I'd love to show you guys kind of the experiences and the places I like to see, San Francisco, Tahoe, etc. So we'll see. We'll see. But that's happening in the next couple weeks. Next, you know, the 2018, we've got some plans, Twitch, podcast, this, working out, vlogs, all that, perhaps Lee perhaps daily videos, so be sure to stick around. Some shit in the works. Who is your favorite athlete? What do you think about Messi? Uh, so Lionel Messi is Argentinian. Shout out to my man. He's an amazing athlete, super quick, insanely talented with a soccer ball. He'll literally handle a soccer ball like most basketball players handle. Um, favorite athlete right now? Uh, big fan of Russell Westbrook. I love his, uh, his intensity uh, and his style of play. Um, Obviously, LeBron James, I'm a fan. Michael Jordan, going back in time. Magic Johnson's one of my favorite athletes of all time. Muhammad Ali, one of my favorite athletes of all time. Um, Lionel Messi's a stud. I don't watch that much soccer anymore. I did for a while. I think the World Cup's this summer. I'll probably stick, stay tuned to that. But uh, favorite athlete, favorite athlete. Yuri Belkin's a stud in terms of lifting world. I'm a big fan. That's probably it. Uh, you know, I'm obviously a fan of Steph Curry and all that. I like watching really good basketball, but uh, Russell Westbrook might be top of my list right now in the NBA that I like to, to watch. Ben Simmons is a stud. I like to watch his style of play too. I kind of like a pass first mentality uh, that he has. Last question. Do you plan on adding, this is a little bit too cheap, but do you plan on adding more programs into Kaizen? Yes, as I mentioned in the front of the video, we just added an advanced fat loss. So if your goal is purely to lose fat, get more shredded, get leaner, that program is available right now, pre-order on discount for you. Click the link in the bio. Oh, this isn't bad. If you always want to work out sub-maximally, when you want to hit a PR, how do you do prime your CNS? Well, one, CNS is not involved. Uh, just erase whatever concept you have of CNS involved, forget about it. Uh, most fatigue you put in your body is actually uh, muscular fatigue over training. Your CNS is just fine. Um, you don't need to prime your CNS per se, but uh, I do do the majority of my training um, some maximally, you know, not training 100% all the time. I uh, did a little video, it was a little bit misconstrued by some of you when I was going, uh, jokingly going back at Allen, and I basically just had one point to add to his heavy singles in training, and that point was, it's not best for all lifters in my opinion. I think there's a time and place for all these different tools we have as coaches and programmers, and when to apply them. I don't think heavy singles are best for everybody, but, um, Heavy singles uh, before some back down sets. If your technique is efficient and you are um, recovering and you're in calorie surplus and all these other factors, if you're advanced enough for that or experienced enough for that, I think that's a way uh, to get ready to test your one rep max. And also just um, progressing into a one rep max. If you're doing you know five sets of five at 65% on pause squats, the next week isn't a good time to test your one rep max. And that's why we have multiple programs on Kaizen. That's how I coach people one-on-one -on -one or whatever it may do. It's different, it's about the progress. There's a difference between writing a workout, testing a one rep max, and actual programming. Programming is weeks, or excuse me, days on days, weeks on weeks, maybe even months on months, years on years potentially, building up with a progression to head somewhere. It's about programming a progression. So we're not just jumping around, there's methods to the madness. You might just see week after week or day after day and say, oh, oh, oh. But if there's not a progression, if there's not a tie-in, if there's not a reason why behind it, then it's actually not good or programming in my opinion. So um, to get to a peak, you can, um, 
throw some heavy singles to back downs. That's obviously very popular and can work building up volume uh, and then taking away that volume, uh, allowing yourself to recover, kind of taper, super compensation or overreaching, whatever you want to call it, recover, and then you test your one rep max. But the sub maximal part of it would just mostly mean in the off season or building the strength. And then as we're peaking, we will touch heavier weights into the 80, 85, 90, 92, 95% before getting ready for that taper, that overcompensation, the uh, super compensation and then uh the taper the peak the heel the fix the deload whatever you want to call it there's a million freaking words out there and then you're going to test your one rep max we have that powerlifting program the shako program whatever you want to check it out or you can just research yourself if you really want to program yourself by all means knowledge is power go learn go get it done hire a one-on-one -on -one coach there's a lot of great coaches out there um but that's the basics of how you're going to get a new one rep max is building that volume building that strength building that technique efficiency motor patterns over time then going into a peak, a taper, smash it out. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you. Be sure to give this a thumbs up. Check out the programs available. Kaizen, check out Mama's Boys, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Salam Mike, we're out of here.